can go into my out of game overlay and say, hey, hi, this is me. We're ready to go with our first game of uh, the series, unfortunately. Uh, so they did change a bunch of stuff about uh, this. And it looks like, uh, yeah, where do I? Yeah, there we go. So I turn off the replay panel and then uh, I turn off the... Uh, Okay, I'm actually gonna leave production uh, off for this game, and hopefully that makes it uh, a little bit easier for everybody to just kind of uh, pay attention, hang out. Also the unit panel, I'll probably leave that off uh, as well. Just trying to figure out what we want to do with this, how we want to handle it. I don't actually know, because uh, I didn't prepare this totally for our new overlay, but uh, yeah, we're gonna leave it like this. Uh, also, let me know about like volume and things like that. I think the volume should be pretty good. Good. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit more in game. There's music and there's sound effects, so let me know. Let me just go ahead and start things off by introducing our first player in the upper right-hand corner of the map, Outsider. This is their yellow Zerg player, Eon Zerg. Eon Zerg, fantastic finals of almost every tournament he plays in. Maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but a player that you could totally expect see in the grand finals he is playing up against our terran player in the red on the left hand side of the map koget koget uh guy that i think i see in pretty much every european starcraft uh remastered tournament even back in brood war tournaments this guy was absolutely everywhere and so definitely a uh, a site for sore eyes if you want to call it that uh Koget, of course, a Polish player, Polish Terran player. Lots of great Polish players have entered this tournament. I uh, just want to give a shout out, of course, to every single player who is representing uh, basically every... Uh, lots and lots of famous esports countries. Belgium, of course, the country of origin for uh, Eon Zerg. So let's actually talk a little bit about the uh, the builds that are coming out here. Uh, we have uh, Barracks first, uh, Barracks before Expand. Uh, nothing too crazy like no proxy barracks out in the middle of the map no uh command center first which can be super risky if, especially if you're getting uh fast pooled this is not a fast pool although there is a gas with it so speed will be coming out here pretty quickly we're not trying any fast expand strategies from either player and that's what i like to see because at least that means that we're going to have uh, a little bit more of a standard early game where uh, we get to see the game develop a little bit and it's not just all about hey do i have my scv in the right spot because, uh, you know, while I have definitely lost quite a few games that way, that is not uh, not the game, not the way that I want it to uh, see all of our series go. So, nice to get a little bit more out there. So, uh, I don't know if this is going to be quite 1-1-1. One, one, one. I actually saw two or three 1-1-1 one, one, one games from Flash earlier on uh, yesterday on his stream. I was like, oh, okay, well, this is just a build that we see in every iteration of every RTS game. You just go straight up the tech tree. Um, but that's not quite what is on the way. Although it is what is on the way for the Zerg player. Uh, just going straight up to Hive. Wow, this is really, really sick. Wanting to, to keep an eye on what our next uh, building is that gets thrown down. Um, this is why we have our unit panel on. Even though it is actually gigantic. This is a super huge unit panel. Um, so I like to keep it off. But it's like, well, you kind of need to know whether or not this is a Spire or a Hydra Den. And it is a Hydra Den. So Den coming down. Lair about halfway done to completing. So we can build a bunch of Hydras. And then we can finish upgrade them. Uh, upgrading them, rather. Now, if you look on the map, the uh, kind of cool thing is that I believe there are precisely, yeah, only four Zerglings right now. Um, it's not just the least number of Zerglings you can go with, which would probably be two. Uh, but uh, with this first Vulture coming out, this should put a decent amount of pressure on. Um, not for long. I mean, our first Hydras should be, yeah, just now popping. Uh, so the, the Vulture comes up and it's like, oh no, I'm a scary Vulture. I can kill all of your... Oh wait, you have Hydras. So it's not uh, not too terrible to deal with. If you did not have Hydralisks and only Zerglings, then uh, you would lose everything to a single Good day, vulture. Commander. That's happened many, many, many times. Um, I did not turn off the sounds that it makes when somebody follows. So thanks to Freddy for following. Big fan. And uh, thanks to everybody else for coming out and watching. This is such a sick tournament, and I'm really, really happy that we're getting into the playoffs. <sighs> okay. That being said, yeah, there's the 1-1-1. Uh, uh, Barracks, 
factory and then double starport rays coming out now i believe the second starport has been hidden and uh with the death of this overlord that means that uh our zerg player is really in the dark right now he needs to get back home defend his overlords from dying to these early raids this works a little bit like if you see protoss players go for a bunch of corsairs kind of the same idea but the follow-up is what makes it truly different uh the idea that not only can these raids actually hit ground units granted it's not a whole lot uh but they um they kill off the overlords the, the follow-up like i said is what's different there's no cloak tech that you're trying to get out of uh you're basically just trying to force the zerg player to stay defensive at home defend the overlords maybe pick off a few drones uh well actually yeah getting a drone there that's uh super super nice and now with the rest of these being uh kind of grouped up we have a group of for rays now is he pumping more and the answer is wow okay he switched it up a little bit going to be going into a control tower to work on cloak technology and still keeping the rays in production so this is actually a really heavy committal and what's so kind of crazy about this to me is that he's killing hydras and drones with that i mean that's just a little bit crazy he's gonna kill the entire drone line and even that might actually die now with lurkers popping out you might say well lurkers aren't going to kill rays well yeah but vice versa as well rays aren't really going to kill lurkers uh unless they're just by themselves out here that is not what you like to see like maybe the burrow right now and kill that but i i mean they're they're gonna die out here let's see if we have a uh, scan technology no there's no academy with this build actually probably should have known that a little bit earlier but here comes the uh the burrow on the ramp it's gonna be able to attack and I mean, that's going to need to get repaired. And so you can see it being repaired from behind. But there's actually no detection right now. There's no eBay. Uh, right as I say that, it's about to finish. So there's almost no eBay. It's, uh, but there's certainly no turrets. So that's the, the, the big deal. That lurker is actually kind of cool. You don't often see that, especially since you do need high hydra numbers. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, no academy. Just going to be this eBay. And there's the missile turret behind it. Lots of repairing going down. I think just barely enough. Yeah, you just need... One, oh, actually, the spikes reach behind there to kill the SCV. That means that bunker's going to fall, and with the bunker falling and this third lurker coming up, it doesn't really matter if you have detection when you can just crawl your lurkers all the way up there. Now, the lurkers are unfortunately glitching down here at the bottom of the ramp, so that is not what you want to see, but the barracks is going to die. That means no more Marines out of this one. They'll still be being produced back here, and, of course, with detection, these rays will be able to clear up the lurkers so you know it's not terrible that lurker is going to die how many rays is this oh my god that's like seven rays let me uh select them all yeah seven rays over here these lurkers are going to get cleaned up uh is there a science facility uh out there i was thinking okay well you've got turrets to kind of hang on for now but is there a science facility the the big thing of course is that behind this you know there's no economy being produced there's like a handful of drones down here it is just all hydras all the time rays are not going to be uh effective at all against hydralisks um in in mass numbers of course we saw a couple get picked off earlier in fact this big ball of rays does have to watch out if it runs over the hydras then it will die super fast if you look at the supplies zerg player down um kind of i guess the way you'd expect it to be especially with only being on two bases right now a lot of times you see three base or five base uh hydra or lurker play uh, this is not that. Uh, this is a very low base, very fast, aggressive rush timing. Even with these Zerglings coming forward, you can see that, uh, I mean, this is just all about putting on the pressure. It delays the bunkers. And uh, I've, I mean, this is the most uh, strangest uh, Wraith build that I've seen in quite a while, I will say. Uh, where is also the uh, the trapped unit? Uh, okay, it's these. Uh, this SCV, I guess, is kind of trapped behind there. So it's grouped to, in with the Wraiths to make them, uh, make them clump up like that. Da, 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 da. Keeping an eye on the rays, and of course, this big ball of angry Zerg units. Of course, keep in mind, like, I mean, I said it was a two base Zerg. It's only a one base Terran right now. He has not been able to expand. Uh, Kogut has kind of figured out look, this is an early aggressive rush build. He's gotten lots and lots of scouting information with these cloaked uh, rays. I mean, I, what do you do against that? They run in, they either one shot or two shot your, uh, your drones, your hydras. I mean, this is just really annoying stuff. And I mean, sure, there are uh, spore colonies at home, but I mean, that is just a lot of rays. Here comes the big bust up the front door. I mean, this is 
what it's all about. The Lurkers run forward, they burrow outside, uh, uh, out of range, and just get these little pot shots off. Marines can't do anything against it, they just run forward and die. Here come the raids back, and this is the big test. He didn't bring any Overlords with this. Uh, where are the Overlords? There's a couple of stuck Hydras, these are not supposed to be there. He needs Overlords with these. Overlords don't have speed. Uh, this build is not a speed Overlord build, let me tell you that much. These two, uh... Where do they go? These two Hydras need to kind of get with the program. There we go. They will finally be grouped up with everything. But these Rays, I mean, they are doing a great job getting in there, dipping, diving, ducking, dodging, and uh, weaving, whatever it is that else they do. This Zerg attack needed to hit kind of a while ago. I mean, at this rate, is there any even command center being built? I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see if there was. Um, but yeah, just playing it a lot safer than that. Running up here, uh, is this going to be a depot or a command center? Also, this medic is just really trying to do the utmost over here. Go in the distance to heal that SCV. Uh, on duty lurker at the front. Actually, uh, about to kill those marines. Yeah, I can't get too close with that. First siege tank is out. But siege mode should be uh, in a little bit. I mean, uh, what is the production tab? There we go. Yeah, GG. He realizes he can't get up on top of the ramp. The siege tank comes out. And Eon Zerg taps out. And that is going to do it. Game number one goes to Kogut. So GG, that is going to do it, and that means that uh, game number one is in the bag. We're now going to go out of game and uh, exit the replay with uh, this. There we go. All right, so we're out of that one. Game number two is coming up here in just a minute. Once again, this is the Italian Esports Open 2017 for StarCraft Remastered. $16,000 on the way, but first you have to qualify. How many people qualify? Well, not that many. Two from this tournament. You're going all the way to the finals, and it's exciting to find out which players will make it there. I've already had a bunch of invites. In fact, just earlier today, Firebat Hero was announced as a Korean representative. So super, super exciting, as well as a host of great uh, foreign players, uh, as well as Koreans, just all coming to one tournament uh, for what should be absolutely fantastic. So that's enough of me talking about the tournament. Let me go ahead and get into this game here in just a second just gotta create over here go over here and away we go it is super late over here in south korea where i'm casting from about uh 2 a.m in the morning so it's uh, it's gonna be a long night but a long night full of brood war can't get much better than that so let's go ahead and get into game number two Number two. All right, here we go. I'm also going to put up a little bit of a scoreboard arena. This is uh, not quite what I would have planned, but the overlay did just change with this iteration of uh, the client. So let me go ahead and hide our uh, replay button so we are not appraised of exactly how long this game is going to go and introduce our players down to the bottom. The Blue Terran player from Poland. It is Koget. Koget. And his opponent in the upper left-hand corner of our map from Hungary. This is Eon Zerg. Of course, you, both players using their super blinged out pre-orders. If you didn't pre-order this game, then I don't know what's going on there. Unlucky. Code is up one game in the series. And I will try to illustrate that by... Adding text that says player one. This is kind of on the fly, guys. So still working on it. It is a work in progress for sure. I'm going to put a large one by Kogut's name. This is the best that we get. The best a man can get. You thought it was Gillette? No. It's production value. Right there. The one goes by Kogut. We'll work on the zero here in just a second. I want to do some fancy observing, so we're going to zoom in on the Overlord. Is it C that gets it back out to normal zoom level? No. It's just me kind of guessing. It's a little bit far in. There we go. We got it. The Overlord progresses across the map. Little by little. Not for long, though. Also, how's my scroll speed? Not that high. All right, we can make it work. We'll make it work. Scouting drone. Uh, either a scouting drone or an early third base. You never can tell these days. Crazy Zerg players. Uh, probably scouting drone. But uh, 
needs to find out where the Terran player is, make sure that there are no proxy racks or anything super, super crazy. If this zone's uh, drones sees two racks in the middle, like uh, around this area right here, that's when you start to go crazy. But a lot of times players will actually build their racks like right down here. So um, if you're a player like Flash or something, or uh, you know the Zerg equivalent of that, you'll definitely see lots of scouts like down here to see uh, proxy racks. But he, uh, is going to get the unlucky scouting path and scout every single direction wrong, or incorrectly, rather. Um, you might be able to intonate from the time that this SCV hits your base uh, where your opponent is, and yeah, that should be what happens. He sees, look, this is the timing for the SCV. It came from this direction, and of course, it's no surprise. So here we go, a third hatchery on the way. So this is going to be three hatch play, um, most likely going to be three hatch Hydra. Sometimes you'll see early lurkers along with that. If it does just stay Hydra, you can bust with that. Certainly not the fastest, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, you can actually see the production tab as the uh, gas finally does come down. If the gas is just coming down right now, I mean, you can uh, you know, read into that a little bit and say, well, we're looking to get the infrastructure up. Not going to go just for the immediate pop of tech as soon as that hits. Um, Trying to see exactly what uh, is in our uh, our stores here. Just the first six lings out on the map. This will be enough to put on pressure and make these three uh, marines or four marines uh, have to micro and control themselves uh, well enough. But this is pretty entrenched. You don't really want to shove six lings right up the front. I mean, he's gonna try, but uh, it's not easy to defend. But it is defendable. Uh, with decent micro and the continual marines popping out. Just trying to shave off the marine count there. And, uh, I think, what, two marines died? So uh, trading things down early on. Um, trying to get that trade while you can before there's a big wall up or a bunker up. Not too, uh, not anything too crazy. I need to make sure to control those SCVs. And yeah, finally, completing the natural. And that's going to be a successful, very, very fast expand. Not the fastest, nothing like a, a command center first, which would die to this, by the way. If you go command center first and have, like, say, only two Marines here, that's just pretty rough. Zergling speed on the way, as well as a lair. Uh, lots of gas being mined. In fact, even the geyser at the natural being taken. No surprises there. The next few Zerglings coming out, not to... Uh, you know, get in here and actually kill a bunch of stuff. Just going to be annoying and make sure that if there is a bunker, you have to micro in and out. Uh, you're actually going to get into a nice position. A lot of times you do either see a bunker up here at the front or just uh, impeccable marine control. And that's actually pretty good marine control if we're going to be fair. Um, not the... Uh, not the best, not if you were watching like Flash play and see uh, SCVs blocking everything. The Zerglings just run in and they all die. It's like, oh, okay, well. But it's still also just not great. Also, why is this drone here? Is he going to build a... There's no way he builds a hatchery here. Uh, that's a very strange drone. Okay, I'm guessing it just got stuck in the rally with the, uh, the Zerglings and had to go all the way down there. But that should be pulled back along with these drones. Just mining, mining, mining away. Lair is complete and we do have a, a Spire on the way. So... It is going to be Mew to play. Uh, do we also have the, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Um, Hydra Den. Uh, sometimes you'll see players go both, uh, but usually uh, not at the same time. Um, sometimes it can be a fake, say, show the Hydra Den and then build your uh, Spire way off in the in the back. But this should be scoutable pretty easily. The Academy is up, and so you're going to see scans here any second now. And the first scan should be to see in the main and see, well, okay, what's the tech? Is it going to be a Spire? guarantee you that should be okay i didn't see exactly where that was but i'm guessing either main does scan show uh in uh in replays i don't know i should have seen that but i did so that's obviously my bad idle scvs oh no what could it be well in case this looks weird to you or you're uh, a little bit new to this this is just to block this uh avenue they're sort of like the door because this can happen so many zerglings running in oh my god that's so many lings um, I actually thought it was going to be Mutas, but it looks like he's just trying to get in here and do it with Lings. And he's actually getting a decent amount of damage. He's got a couple of SCVs, or maybe even only just one out there. And here are the Mutas in production, so keep an eye on that. Um, we already do have Stim finished, so Stim is, of course, one of the best lines of defense for uh, Marines to defend against early Zergling attacks. So, uh, I mean, there is a big timer on this. Keep in mind, if this does not deal damage, uh, Zerg player will be pretty behind. This uh, expansion has been used for Mutas. This expansion has been used for Mutas. This expansion's larva has been used for Mutas. So all of this are not rounds of drones. You're focusing on trying to get in here and deal a lot of damage. Now, 
Is there an engineer? Yeah, so there, there is an engineering bay, but do we have turrets up yet? I don't think so. So this is going to have to be pure Marines. Now, there are turrets in construction, but I mean, uh, this many mutas can actually just dive in here and pick off every single Marine, especially if you combo that with all these Zerglings running in. You want to go in both at the same time or say, well, try to pick things off early and then whittle it down and then go in all at once. That's where the damage is going to be done. You pick off units as they spawn, just getting in here for a couple of cheeky marine kills, force the Terran player to split their forces. And, um, that's actually a big committal to turrets in the natural. Four turrets down there, continual muta micro, just shaving things off. You see the glaives will bounce and hit these marines. Oh, nice control, keeping every single mutalisk alive. Wow, perfect utilization there, or mutilization, if you want to go that far into meme territory. Now, Mutas are starting to get pretty low, so these Zerglings are, these are battery Zerglings. You hold them, you hold them, you hold them, and then you unleash the charge, the potential energy. They're being held right down there. Watching, waiting for the Mutas to dive in, but uh, like I did say earlier, several of these very, very low health, most of them, if not all, very, uh, kind of below half HP, so... Still waiting on seeing them get in here. How much damage are they going to do? Well, I, I, hitting the main or splitting the... Uh, yeah, see, this is where you run the Zerglings in. The Zerglings saying, okay, well, where do I need to be? And sensing a little bit of weakness, that could actually signal a lot of uh, focus there. Now, this is a full control grip of Mutalist. These Marines are scared out of their minds right now. They kill, they die so, so fast. In fact, actually even more than a control group of mutas being built. Uh, just because he does expect probably one or maybe two of these to die. It's like reinforcement mutas. So diving in here, trying to you know, get a, uh, a foothold on top of this Terran production. But oh no, that's actually really bad. He loses quite a few mutas early in. Oh man, the Zerglings just not comboed in at the same time. Now, I mean, it's still good to see uh, Marines getting picked off. But when you lose your entire... Uh, flock or horde of zerglings like that unless you've just got perfect jadong s muta control yeah that's just not gonna do it and uh, gg uh ian zerg taps out and this is gonna be kogut with a 2-0 victory advancing on to the next round of the uh, eu playoffs so congratulations to kogut a 2-0 ian zerg both times unsuccessful with his rushes so